Wait, is there a little red light going? It looks okay. like, yeah, the red light's on, so that means we've been recording. So, this is good. so are we here for karaoke or what? No, yeah, right, we're just saying we're here for, we're here, we're here at the okay. Hutchison Lab at Weird. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's up on the tree. Jan <laughs> <laughs> January 29th, 2013, we are at Hutchison Lab at Life Ray, and we have a visitor with us. And yes, yes, Doctor Tanaka. A, a doctor. Now we're now we're going to use doctor. <laughs> right. Doctor Tanako. Tanaka. 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 T a n a k a. Yes. Tanaka. Yes. And and why are you here? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> This is what happened. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm here because um, I I used to live five minutes drive from John's place in Vancouver, Canada, and didn't know that John existed there. I mean, I knew John John was somewhere in this globe, but I didn't know I lived so close to John. And it goes back for a long, long time. Um, my, my dear friend, Junichiro Nirasawa from Tama Shubanda Tama Publishing, he's now the president of Tama Publishing, um, gave me a free copy of the brand new book. Came out in Japan, um, uh, Kyoi no Hachison Koka, The Amazing Hachison Effect, in 1994. So you, you read a book about John in 1994? Yeah, my, the publisher is a friend of mine. He's a very good friend of mine. We're going back for more than 30 years. And I'm a doctor now, but I have life before be I became so-called doctor. And, and, so and what's your specialty? I am a linguist by training, and I'm also an anthropologist. And I have my second doctoral degree, which is in clinical um, area of behavior analysis. Behavioral analysis. I work like with children diagnosed with autism and special uh, needs, um, young people. So, where does so, that all pull together with Hutchison? And I'm also a musician, I'm a singer. Okay. So and I'm a poet. And a poet. And, and so, <laughs> so is, is John like a person with special needs? <laughs> I was just wondering what it could be. Are you, are you going to post this on YouTube? <laughs> well, yeah, we'll oh post Oh my god, this is one of those that even you would consider putting on you. So you saw a video of Carla and you decided you had to come here. <laughs> oh my, that's one of the things, like, you know, oh my goodness. Well, he's got to be a good performance artist. And I know John's a great musician. He, what kind of musician? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we have, we have, um, electromagnetic artist. Electromagnetic artist. You're an electromagnetic artist. Did you know that, John? No, but now I do. No, now you do. Yeah. Okay. We, so now you have a new label. But the electromagnetic yeah. artist. An e, you're an EM artist. artist. Electromagnetic yes. artist. Okay. Yes. So the reason I came here is a long story, and. Although I knew John's work and I was fascinated, I have spoken with my colleagues, uh, physicist Dr. Shigemi Sasaki, the chairman of Japan uh, Nihon Sai Kagaku Gakkai, the Japan Sai, PSI Science Academy, and his associate, uh, Dr. Tianjian Miao from um, China, China, and uh, about how we can facilitate communication with John and to uh, develop technology to clean up the environment, especially the nuclear disaster and radiation. So it's been going on for a couple of years since March 11th, and and we had come across with a, through the Facebook and exchanged email. John sent me huge files of um, documents, that the documentation um, for um, going back for many many years, and. Um, I was like uh, April of 2011, and I didn't know what to do with it because I am not the right person to help him. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an engineer. I'm not 
Uh, well, you, that's you must be a musician then. I am a musician. Oh, one, so, so I didn't know that 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 was all it took. You know, um, it's the harmonics. Um, exactly. And and what is what is harmonics? But it's a relationship it's of one the, thing to the other, right? And which is natural yeah. law. Yeah. So, I was familiar with the the resonance in how how the Schumann resonance that certain frequencies around the Schumann the Schumann resonance we use that the Schumann resonance um, in our tones exactly so so we identified that and Dr. Sasaki knew he, he's written uh, academic articles about your work and he tried to replicate it himself in the 80s earlier than the Tama book so anyway um, I have many facets in my life and I do work with the real life situations as clinician but also um, I've been a student of <coughs> other things, the things that are not so tangible and I actually have a doctoral degree on, on studying the uh, shamanism of the indigenous people. Uh, relates to my ancestors in Japan. And do you see a, a, a similarity between what John's doing and what Absolutely. is doing with Absolutely. the ancient knowledge and, Absolutely. and technologies? Absolutely. Absolutely. So actually I, I was drafting up a, kind of like a research proposal um, to give opportunity for the, the John's uh, knowledge and skills and, and to meet different cultural and different cultural perspectives about even the different scientific tradition because the assumptions very different in uh, uh, East or the Asia, the more traditional um, societies that, um, for example, like we have in our language the uh, energy that permeates the universe is also right here and it's in, in with us and outside. It's ki or chi, and then there's lack of that understanding and the or even acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Yeah. So this is nothing mystical. This is part of what we do and then see and experience. And but it's only recently the physicists in Asia, including China, Hong Kong, and Japan, began looking at this as within the scientific context. And they have produced a lot of work. There's a highly respected Chinese um, physicist uh, writing about the science of the invisible and the energy, subtle energy, all this. So the zero point energy, the zero point field, actually is a translation of the original term in Chinese and Japanese to explain places where the magnetism doesn't um, fix in, in one direction. So so when you go to a certain place of, uh, I guess it's the fault, um, special places where the two forces, uh, gravitational forces, kind of creates the tension. And right in the middle, you take that uh, compass, it goes round and round, and you cannot decide one place. So they call it uh, Rei Tenba or Rei Tenjiba, zero point field. They call it the zero point field? Yeah. <laughs> Funny. So that's how that got borrowed. Uh, actually, Dr. Sasaki said that I am one of the first to, to introduce the concept, now everybody's using it. So there you go. It's remembering what we already know. Exactly. And, and when you look at the West, the, including something, the new so-called free energy or the new energy, and including the cold fusion, people who are working in physics, but now shifted to more like a chemistry. So they've found the, a home ground in chemistry, but what they have done is uh, both, right? Physics. And now they are looking into biochemistry, you know. This is all organic for us. Um, the traditional people or indigenous people, um, it isn't anything new. Now, what's new is, is the availability of different resources and the, the technologies to make this, um, um, how do I say, to realize that that is 
we, what we have is capable. Well, maybe we were capable thousands of years ago, who knows, right? But somehow we lost that capability. But machines can help us realize and manifest that. Well, if nothing else, the machines can be something where we can give information. We can use the internet, we can use the computers, right. and we can share information. And so we can, we can look at a culture that has thousands of years mm -hmm. of, of history and knowledge and, and communicate with, with those people in that culture and learn something um, where uh, I've said this in the video with you is that the United States really um, doesn't have a culture, doesn't have a history, doesn't have a background, doesn't have something to pull on like the Eastern Oriental uh, cultures that have um, their oral traditions that have saved these um, pieces of knowledge that are so important. Um. You know, by appearing on YouTube through these discussions, I think that people would start thinking about who I am and where I come from. And like every one of us on Earth, we are all having more than one perspective, but we are kind of like always have a pressure to be one, so-called mainstream and normal. You know, and I work with children who don't fit in the norm. And so I I cannot contradict myself. I work with them, I try to help them. I don't want them to, to be forced into so-called normal they cannot be. They're brilliant. And we got to learn from them. Right. And when I see John, someone like John, I see great hope for not those special needs children, but the children in Japan right now. When adults around them pretend that nothing is wrong, and they go back to just making money and recover economy, build community by building homes, bridges, and then forget about the past. This is what's happening. Look at the Fukushima accident and the nuclear nuclear disaster and the radiation is like we must go on so don't talk about this and then just just be happy and and then just keep on going and who is who is you know just have such a pain well, and you're a mother and, I, and and I'm a mother and when um, when something happens in the house mom has to take care of setting things back in place, right? And the kids don't want to, um, uh, they want to avoid it, right? They, they don't want to avoid it, they just want to keep doing whatever it is they're doing, right. and they don't want to have to deal with it. So you, many times the mom has to discipline the child and get the child to move <laughs> on and to grow. And right. what I right. see that the government is doing is they're letting this be something that continues and they're not cleaning up and going on. I mean, you've got to clean it up. You've got, you've, you, you, otherwise you're just, um, do, do you have, I had really messy children that would, like you tell them to clean the room and then you'd go in there and the bed would just be piled with stuff and then when a sheet or a blanket over the top. So they're covering up the mess. Right, right, okay? right. And everything's right. okay now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything's okay. There, yeah. There's no problem. Yeah. And that's what I feel like is happening with so much of this nuclear yes. issues. And it's yeah. not, you know, the, yeah. Fukushima is bad. But there's also some mm -hmm. 200 other nuclear power plants that are also leaking and are on fault lines. And and we want to to resolve and clean up the issue with Fukushima, but then we got to look around the room, and there's a lot more messes out there that have to be taken right, care of. Right. When uh, <clears throat> when I confront this fact, there are options that we have as humans. You can be depressed, right, and you can get angry, and and just fight, or realize that this alternative and we educate ourselves and others and strengthen the alternatives so that we
can move on in the right direction, we can preserve the futures for the children. And I think I love the fact that John is an, a great artist and musician because I see it from your, my heart and in your heart that whatever great technology there may be, it has to be in the heart of a great artist with human heart. And, and, and you want to talk about that with, with what your heart says about what you're doing? Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. We've been doing talk for two yeah. Long, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. Let's talk. Dad talk. <laughs> dad talk. Dad talk. About. About what does your heart say about Earth and what you're doing and the children and and why do you? Well, do I, I. Well, I get along fine with the young generation. I love the kids. And why? Why are you even mm -hmm. bothering doing this? Why? Are you, why are you working other than your wife is. You know, like crazy that you, you have to do this, John. <laughs> well, I love the children. Yeah, the young generation. And they and should have their freedom and not be subject to man's um, craziness and insanity with poisons and, poison and, and bombs and nuclear reactors that go on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. Crazy politicians and control freaks, dictators. There's so much of that going on out there for a long time, actually. And so you do this so that there's a future for the children. Yeah, the young generation. You don't really care what anybody else thinks, do you? No. 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 You don't. You don't care about writing an academic paper. No, I wouldn't do that. And this stuff shirts and ego maniacs love doing that stuff. So you just you're just doing this. I just do it. Yeah. Take it as you will, folks. Well, critics write about artists. They need artists to write about. Well, if you're a, if you're a, a that's true. That's true. if you're a singer or a musician and you pick up a an <laughs> instrument and you start playing it and you're enjoying it and you're playing it and everybody else is is, is enjoying it and playing it, are you are you do you have to stop and write down that music or can you just be playing your music. Exactly. Yeah, some people do both, but greatest artists in the world, um, like Stevie Wonder, he cannot read. Yeah, Stevie Wonder can't read. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's the difference? Like, you know, um, I don't want to talk about my research background and stuff, but um, I've got many things, many personalities and many ancestors and I guess helping me and um, I have Aboriginal ancestors through my father's side and I have um, uh, so-called shamans or medicine women um, in my family and luckily that I, I was born in the community where people were very open-minded so none of, none of my relatives went to um, psychiatric word. They're sent to the hospital for diagnosis or anything. But I feel so, so, so worried and concerned about these young people now, um, especially in Japan. Um, the communities, you know, devastated by earthquake and, and everything else. Um, there is no opportunity for them to be different. There's no opportunity for them to be great. You need somebody who says, this is what my worldview is and why do I have to be like you? For example, like they, they can't, I don't see that the society is um, encouraging them to be a great inventor, to challenge the norm and challenge the authorities and be creative, and that that's what exactly Japan needs now. They gotta think outside the box. They gotta educate the people, not young people, not to memorize what everybody else before them did or said, but to think mm -hmm. right. for themselves and think uh, with their own head and be a true scholar. That's what it is. Well, they're getting westernized. That's what's happened in the United States. That's what we what we all went through with public education was to just memorize and do the task, memorize and do the task, and cognitive reasoning was not part of it.
taking mm -hmm. something and and um, and looking at it and then saying, well, maybe this over here, this over here, that was not, no, no, no. It's what you were told and that's what all it is. Well, what um, about a long time ago when there were so many inventors and free spirits that created all this industrial age? Of that, that happened before the U.S. had, for the U.S., it was before the U.S. had public education. Mm. When, the, when they would do homeschooling, the kids, or, they, or in the churches, or whatever, they're taught how to read and write, and then they went from there. Mm -hmm. And then they, then they read the books, and then they created off of that. They, they didn't have class. You, didn't, you don't know what school's like, John. No, I would go to school and I would walk out the other door. Yeah. Well, here, here the kids are here. Here the kids are taught to sit in a certain chair, and then the bell rings, mm -hmm. and you line up, and then the bell rings, and you walk down the hall, and then the oh. bell rings, and you sit down, and you eat, and then the bell rings, and you line up, and then you walk down the hall. What a great conditioning, huh? Right. So that that's what that's what public education yeah. is about. It's about power and control and keeping the little slaves working along the line. Yeah. And we did not have that back. That's well, we had all these inventors a hundred years ago. We did not have public education. Actually, my son, he's now 15. But, oh, he's going to hate me for talking about him, but I'm really proud of him. But when he was nine or ten, he actually drew the pyramid of the education system because he didn't fit in. Yeah. So, so that's that's what that comes with the Western industrialization, and they needed the <laughs> the big mass population to serve the top, right? Right. And and so they needed to be in the definitely in this narrow perspective and not look outside right. to challenge the power. Well there's a there's a, a picture that just was put up on the internet in the Fukushima area um, that's that's being um, I shouldn't say the no go zone it's the where they're cleaning up areas that's contaminated. So they have the guys in the suits cleaning it all up mm -hmm. and right next to that person it's in a playground, the kids are playing and then you've got somebody in a hazmat suit. That is absolutely exactly what happened at the Gulf of Mexico with the BP oil spill yeah. where the, the cleanup workers were in hazmats and the little kids were playing in this water and there's a picture of that and we're like so it's conditioned good. yeah, they we're so conditioned that that's, that's supposed to be okay Yes, I, I completely agree. That is, um, when I approached, this is something that we've been talking, I've been talking about more than once, but um, going back to your first question, why am I here? You know why? Because I asked my associates in Japan, nobody wanted to meet John Hutchison in person. They have money. I mean, some of them are honest and they are, too busy right now, but the ones that already know you in person from your two previous trips to Japan, um, I had a really cold response and reactions. Isn't they're not criticizing you, but it's just like really, it's like almost there's a barrier, you know, that they're just not the mind is not there, and I think that perhaps this is. Japan in general right now. If I've, I've spoken with uh, um, corporate engineers and, and people who are associated with um, companies in electronics and all that, um, they, say, they say that, well, John Hudson's great. We, we really admire John. John's work is great. But the industry, the electronics and all that, industry is so behind that there's a huge gap between the products that they can <laughs> create and then sell in the market and what John's inventions are. Therefore, we cannot do anything right now. What's, that's silly. <laughs> well, because they cannot make money right now. Well, it's money. It's money, yeah. money, 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 money. Well, I'll tell you what, they're all dead. So uh, there is enough. There is enough radiation just in plutonium, and there is 2,500 other radioisotopes that blew out and continue to come out of Fukushima to kill everything on Earth ten times over. A very slow 
painful death. It will never be acknowledged as radiation poisoning. It'll be a flu that can't go away. It'll be advancement of heart disease. It'll be um, colds that won't go away. It'll be lung cancer. It'll be thyroid cancer. It'll be all these different debilitating things, autoimmune systems breakdown. All these things will happen, and they are happening. And um, so we, we, either, we either play the music and sing our song and don't worry about writing down you know, the paper, we just do it, um, or everybody's dead. And we're going to do that, and we continue to do well, that. Well, you don't have to do that paperwork thing. No, Others we're not. like Ken Shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> MIT researchers will do that for you. Yeah. Well, Ken's <laughs> actually very sick. He's, yeah. he's one of oh, the okay. victims of the radiation. Um, because so. of the the, the yep. project that he's involved in. Yep. San Francisco got hit really bad. So, really? yes, yep. Um, and well, uh, Seattle was um, hit as bad as Tokyo. And that was, that's verifiable with the uh, independent scientists that we're monitoring. Mm -hmm. So now we go forward, and we're going to go forward, and hopefully there are people um, that you are connected with that um, would like to do that. Otherwise, um, uh, we just continue and uh, we look forward to the children and that's really why we do this because the adults are so locked into their mindsets. We tell people they have to act, they have to have a four-year-old's attitude coming here because a four-year-old hasn't been programmed. A four-year-old can see and can ask and they can they, they can say why is the sky like that, and why is you know the, they don't even know blue. Mm -hmm. That why is it why is it why is the sky different mm -hmm. than the grass? Why is there this difference? That, and they're not told it's blue, it's green, it's this, it's that. They 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 just can see things and not see them without the programming attached. I just want to may I say one thing that um, actually um, I had a privilege of uh, meeting and spending some time with. Um, someone uh, from my tradition, my cultural traditional tradition of the Ainu people, someone who is the carrier of the, the last carrier of the tradition, and she passed away six months after I met her. Her name is Aiko, Aoki, Aiko. Um, she didn't go to school either. She couldn't go to school. She was prevented from going to school because she was so sick when she was young. Luckily, because she didn't go to Japanese school, she learned the native language from all the elders in the village. And so she became one of the last one, the only ones who can speak that language and sing and tell stories. Not only that, she inherited the medical knowledge, medicinal herbs and how to use different kinds of rocks for healing. But more important, she learned from that spiritual traditions directly. And that is a big problem for the indigenous communities all over the world, because our shamans and our spiritual leaders were jailed and sent to sanatoriums or killed just because, just because this is a tradition that the scientific community didn't like, and before that was Christian and religious community. They both are like, they both believe the faith in science, faith in God, it's the same thing, and they do not want to acknowledge otherwise. So this is the reason why I'm so here. So science has become the God? Exactly, isn't it? I mean, the reason and, why... And then who's, who's, who's science, which means who's God? Who's God and who's science. Science is a cultural practice. I am not denying the values of science, but science is a cultural practice. It isn't God. It is not God. So there is a limit because the science of the West developed in the West. If the same tradition taken different communities, it would evolve differently, like in India. They have a completely different mathematical... You know, tradition is superb, better than ours. I've always you said know? our math is wrong. <laughs> I've, I know, I've always said it. I've always said it. Well, I think well, mathematics, they can prove that a bumblebee can't fly. Too. Right, with the mathematics, they can prove the And with mathematics, they can prove that 
um, Hutchison is unable to levitate or transmutate because mathematically it's impossible. Yeah. Well, I I, know, I, like uh, I have to say that that the mentor, the Aiko, uh, this this uh, shaman, the shaman shamaness. Uh, uh, she um, she had the abilities that are, we are forbidden to talk about. <laughs> okay. And, and oh, okay. Wait. It's, it's, so and, uh, so, so I, who forbids you to talk about them? Um, we were as as a people we are forbidden to talk about as who? indigenous indigenous people because um, it's a, it's a, it's a government that forbids you. Partly, I think. In the past, um, I'm not saying I am coming out, and I'm, I've written about it, and so I've got the dissertation that passed. So the forbidden knowledge um, includes um, the many things that you know we call it a psychic, but it's just a, a superb ability of hearing the frequencies, uh, being able to see beyond. Like he, she can see. Um, inside of the blood, sure. blood flow, and then identify white cells and red cells and all of that. And and when you have something is wrong, she sees, or your organ is sick, right? So this is, it was um, important for the skilled medicine woman those days. Like if you don't have those abilities, you cannot. Practice. So she was the last one. Did she teach others? She tried to teach others. But it was very limited. So I think my role is to to bring out the bits and pieces and make it as whole as possible. Because um, luckily John's here, and I think John has a lot to contribute to reviving this great tradition. And we call it spiritual, but it is science. Mm -hmm. Science of the invisible things. Right. And a lot of the Christians don't know the Bible was altered in the original scriptures. It's very scientific. It's <laughs> this this person that they called Jesus was was a, a healer, but he talked about the mechanics of the body, and he you know his. <laughs> so yeah. it was it's like it's very scientific. It wasn't it wasn't any woo woo stuff. It was this is the how this works with this. It's that relationship, yeah. the law. Harmonics and the harmonics and our body vibrates and there's an energy field and yeah. of course there's gonna if if you're gonna sit here and look at this look at this tea here and I'm shaking it. You see it's mm -hmm. vibrating mm -hmm. and you see there's a wave patterns that are in there, right? Yeah. Well, those wave patterns aren't just on that water. You can feel it right there in your hand. So you're, you can feel something that you can't see. Well, your body is vibrating. Mm -hmm. There's a field around your body. It does, it's there. Just by the aspect that you have a vibration in your body is proof enough that there is a field around your body. Mm -hmm. there's, there's waveforms around your body. Just because these eyes can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. A lot of times this camera will pick it up and a lot of times people like the, the woman yes. that you talk yeah. about, she's trained herself so that she can see it. Yeah. Oh, I also I have, I've kind of, I mean, came to know other artists and who had similar abilities. Like one is my dear late friend Fukuzawa Moro and he had a beautiful, beautiful voice and he passed away at age 50. Um, he's one of those that never wrote about his abilities, but he could levitate mm -hmm. things. And then when he feels that he has excess of those chi or ki energy, that he has to bend spoons and things. So this is like, is nothing spectacular, show, no nothing. It's just that he had to do it. But unfortunately, he um, he became very, very lonely and unbalanced, yeah, unbalanced in the end, so he... Um, died of heart disease, but his spirit is here. Mm -hmm. You s you hear his songs, and he has a beautiful song called Canto del Cosmo, and um, it's the, he sang in Esperanto, the song of the universe, and it's beautiful love and peace and all this, and his spirit is soaring here. Wonderful. Mm. Wow. Well, is there anything else that you want to say, John? Well, uh, yeah, it's good. Um, 
great to see you arrive here and uh, we spent many days doing little experiments and it was fun yeah. yeah and talking and reminiscing about Japan when I was over there and wow I do hope you come back again well I do hope that um, next time will be a group of people because this is in it's a huge place, and this uh, um, John and Nancy and his uh, uh, team um, is converting this old marketplace or a huge um, building into an educational and research center. And I'm really impressed. And there's a seminar room that can accommodate more than 100 people. And if, the, if you have a group that wants to come, let us know. And we are going to have seminars that are for specific uh, purposes and teaching. But if there's a group that wants to come and for specific teaching, mm -hmm. just let us know. Um, we have some large bedrooms with extra beds and things in it that if, if people want to bunk up together, there's hotels around. and. Uh, come and learn and we just just want to share and uh, um, also you are setting up a broadcasting station on yes. television which will be great because um, I would love to see you guys um, I, I like to organize um, a workshop for the kids you make crystal power cells you know moms and and the kids or something and um, it would be great if you if you can help if we can connect and televise because yeah, yeah. well if, if you have any of your contacts that are into nanoteching oh yes definitely these crystal power cells can be nanoteched onto a, like a credit card and you could run a, an appliance off mm -hmm. of a card mm -hmm. because it it isn't the size of it it's the shape of it if you can get that shape that tiny onto a card then um, we could we could have the new um, current. See, I know that you're not interested in making money, and the reason why the people who are corporations cannot come to you right now is because they're looking at the totally the wrong direction. But in order for for you and others to continue the the good job, you need to be sustainable. So, which is great, you have a non-profit organization yes. yep. and education and. So maybe that, in really good way, that the, the resource will be generated, will be used infinitely to facilitate the learning well, if, and, and, and healing. If they, had a, if they had one of these credit cards, and this credit card will run a computer, it'll run a refrigerator, okay? Oh, wow. Okay, mm -hmm. so I come to you and um, you're making refrigerators, and I'll give you 10 of these cards and you give me a refrigerator. Are you, give, do you, are you following me? It's, it would be the new currency. Currency, that's Current, right. That's right. Current, as in energy. Right now, the right, current, right, see? Right. It's a new right. currency. So, yes, it, it, but people have to think outside. If there are people that are doing the nanotaking, they have to think outside. Well, now I have something that I can barter. I can change this and get something else for it and as as it goes out and the cards mm -hmm. go out mm -hmm. then somebody might have a 10 extra cards mm -hmm. the guy who makes the refrigerators and he goes and might get supplies with mm -hmm. it you know in all of this is that the current in currency is because why do we have to switch thinking that way because the money and dollars and yens cannot buy clean water one day or air or air that's true. Or Earth. Earth or is Earth. Earth is dying. So let's get, let's let's get let's change that. Earth is dying and go on. And, and but the money is never paper or gold. It, money was something that you exchange for real thing that yep. you need. Your human energy. Yeah. So we are gonna have to think that way. And there is nothing we lose because we're all dead, as you said. Right. So if we don't switch now will die anyway. Yeah. If we switch now, we die, but we we'll live and we die with a fulfillment. Right, and, you know? and just maybe, just maybe, our children will have actually a clean world. 
we're all contaminated. Just, just, so can we yep. can we move forward? Well, if if you even look at the Japan butterfly mutations, and this is what you, people really need to look at, that it isn't the 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 first generation down had some mutation, then the second one worse. By the time they're getting the fourth or fifth generation of these these butterflies that were affected by the radiation, mm -hmm. they're grossly, grossly mutated. And what's happened with the humans with Chernobyl, it isn't the the first children that were born, it's the, the children that were born, the yeah. children, and there's these horrible gross mutations happening from in the in the human populace from mm -hmm. Chernobyl and Fukushima was many times worse. So that that's the reality so let's um, reject that reality and substitute our own and instead of just taking the blanket over all the garbage on the bed let's clean it up and let's move you know um, there are people who would uh, um, have said about how aliens would come and help us oh yeah okay now I don't want to criticize UFOs and all these research going you know have done I'm not Criticizing, but I think that you know um, we have this world that we have created, this earth, and who made the mess? That we did it. Right. Why do you have to wait for somebody else and come and clean up? Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Not gonna, Not gonna happen. happen. Not gonna happen. We have to clean up, and and we have the tools to do it. And then if we don't we can clean do it. up. If we don't clean up, they are not going to be happy. They will go away. I mean, it's like yeah. the universe will be, a great portion of the universe, not just this planet, will be uninhabitable. Yeah. You know, we have to yeah. think about that. This is not just our house. It's other people's, I do believe that this universe is occupied. And if we are alone, maybe it's just us. But if we are not, then we have to think about our neighbors, you know? Mm -hmm. We gotta think really, and not just humans that we have. Really, really and we th when you think about that, yes, yeah. if, 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 if Earth is sick, if Earth is, is having a problem, it's gonna affect the rest of the solar system. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, it's like I go like this, Oh, look at that! See, <laughs> that's okay. right. Okay. Oh, my so that's, no, that's so. Earth, so that's that was Earth getting poked. Everybody oh, no. goes like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fukushima blew up, and everybody went. Oh, and it, and that reverbed all that reverbed across the Earth, across the whole universe. That reverbed. Yeah, exactly. So, so we gotta think that way. So yeah. we're gonna we're coming back with the the frequencies and the restoration and the calmness and the harmonics. Come on, everybody, let's get this done. You know, there's a lot more fun things to do than clean up messes. Yeah, that's right. So that's let's right. just just get it you over know. with. Let's get the mess done. You no, know, you know let's what? Go. Think about the happy times we can have, and drop all that grudge. And then this is time that we work together. Mm-hmm. And we're family. We're all humans. We put down the differences. We're gonna have to work together. Yep. And if you haven't resolved your differences, well, maybe in another life, because we're all gonna die anyway. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So forget about that difference. This is not the time to argue. We're gonna right. have to work together. Yep, let's just get it done. All right, good video. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, <yeah. laughs> hey! <Yeah. laughs>